Previously on Sailing Catalpa, we enjoy our little slice of paradise, sail to meet up with our friends, and have a fiesta on the beach, and raft up in another epic location. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. I sat on a... that. <laughs> what a hurt. Is that a freak? There's a lot of flies. And bees. Sometimes you guys get the perception that like an unrealistic view of us because we don't share the crappy side and the fights and the arguments and all the reality of, of what happens. We like to show the good times. I kind of just wanted to make this video to share that we're not perfect. <laughs> we're far from it. And just now there was, there's been arguments all day. So it's kind of perfect to talk about it just to shine some light on it because I think you know it makes you feel normal. You want to talk about living on board with teenagers? It's challenging on a boat. It is. Not for me but for the rest of the family. <laughs> they tend to struggle now and then. And uh, us fellas we seem to keep it all together pretty well. We really love each other. <laughs> but we have moments where we need a little bit of space. When you live in a little house, like a sailing boat, how do we do that? I'm still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> it's easy, you just jump in the ocean, it fixes everything. Salt water is the healer of all things. All troubles, all worries. You jump in, you come out, you're a new person. That is my solution. Go for a paddle, flick a line, you know. Go There's... have a cold beer on the beach by yourself and watch the sun go down. There's plenty of ways to enjoy and get away from your family when you need to because most of the time you love hanging out but there are moments for us as a couple living on a boat where we've been together um, 20 years this year which is a long time mm. and we still really like each other <laughs> like or love both i really love you but i also really like you i think one thing about living on a boat and having a relationship you really need to like and to keep it alive and to want to be around each other, you have to work on it like anything else. So, you know, we live on a boat with our two kids and they're teenagers and we make time, if not every day, at least every couple of days to go off on our own and have our own little adventure. And it can be as simple as grabbing our morning mud water and hopping on a paddleboard and going for a little adventure around our new anchorage and jumping in having a snorkel and just enjoying each other's company and getting away from the boat and ever, all the things that distract you. Making an effort. We prioritise that sometimes. Sometimes you need it more than other days. Morning, Pelicans. If days like these last One another with the feeling pass. Would you find out with me if it all starts to crumble? Flies. They can be like kids sometimes, rather annoying. <laughs> 18? And 16. Teenagers, they call them. We've lived on a boat with our kids since they were 8 and 10. So we've seen a lot of years, <laughs> a lot of changes, a lot of challenges, and we, I guess, have survived them all <laughs> so far. Just. <laughs> It hasn't been always easy, but it definitely has been worth it. And I think that if you really want to live this lifestyle, it's, it's putting in the effort and understanding how all the dynamics work and what you guys all, the, uh, the reason why you want to live on the boat. Sometimes people look at our channel and they really, they think that our family is perfect and wow, look at them, look at them all hanging out all the time. They must never fight and um, it's not true. We love hanging out with our kids. We, we love hanging out with each other and, but we also just want to burst those bubbles that some of you may have that we are perfect. We are really not. So. You can speak for yourself. <laughs> 
We definitely have moments like everybody else. We don't show the real downs and we don't want to, we don't want to show those. What we show are the good times and there's a few reasons for that is I want to respect our kids and not put that stuff onto YouTube. So there are reasons why we don't show all of that stuff. We love to share all the challenges of, of this cruising life. And I think if you followed our channel for a long time, you know that we'd like to keep it real. I want you guys to understand that we are not perfect. And especially the last few videos, we've really, uh, we've really had a good time and we really have. And that's what we like sharing. There are so many people jumping on boats right now that, you know, you might have a, an ideal life that you see on YouTube that looks incredible. And then you jump on the boat and reality is it's hard. And that's the truth. <laughs> it really is sometimes. It's about money, guys. It's really not. It's more about the relationships with your family, friends, or whoever you're sailing with. We meet lots of people that they couldn't, they couldn't do it as a family or as a couple or... We're not gonna beat around the bush. <laughs> At the end of the day, if you're gonna live on a boat, whether it be with your wife, friends, family, or kids, whatever it is, you gotta get along. And it can be challenging at some stages, at some point of the journey. A small space amplifies things, so you really have to be good at communication and working things out as a team and being able to get over things kind of quickly because if you let things draw out over days, it can, it's not going to be great. Um, yeah, living on a boat, things change so much. The weather, where you've got to go. It's a very small percentage of the time, but you do have to deal with it. Know that there's going to be days of, that aren't fantastic, but know that there's going to be so many incredible moments. It really Up and is. down. Let's get back to in the Sea of Cortez. Let's go have some fun. Living on a boat, things can go missing quite easily. Things fall over into the water or get blown off by the wind. One bonus of a clear water anchorage is that you can see and easily find things that go missing. Retrieving items off the bottom here isn't too bad and when we do, we always check the sand in case there is anything else. Donkey? Donkey! What is that? A goat? A, donkey, eh? a huge for a goat. Well, I can hear it. Like I can hear a goat. goat. That sounds like a goat. That looks like a donkey. Come on, look. Barbara. Do you think there would be a donkey just wandering around on this island? No! Because we think we've spotted a donkey. Look at this. If it is a donkey. There's definitely goats on here. We can hear them, but this thing is way bigger than. A goat. So, let's go see. Thank you for that, yeah. Oh, we spotted some goats. I don't know if you can see them there in the distance over here. I think it may have just been a big goat. Oh, listen to them! <laughs> So many goats. <gasps> that one has like a, a goatee. They're all amongst the hills up there. <laughs> They're so cute. These rays are everywhere in these anchorages and yeah, we pretty much are in the water all day right until the sun goes down. Life oh, you look really strong, babe. No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes 
Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. We love it when our friends sail on into the same anchorage. Night Runner is back, and in our next episode, we have an incredible few days here on the island Esperato Santos. From cliffs so high, trust in our wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. Searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. He's curious. I'm just gonna grab him. Oh, it's a baby. It's a baby. Go for me. And when he comes out, he'll go. He's coming for us. I almost got him. Bella. Oh, me. Our boat Catalpa is a Pearson 530 and has a centre board, which means the board up draws just under 6 feet, but when the board is down, our draft is 7 feet. The centre board up means we can anchor in more shallow anchorages, and the centre board down makes for better sailing upwind. Since we have owned the boat, the centre board has always been stuck. Let's see if we can get this keel to drop. We haven't uh, had the keel down and it's a bit stuck, so we're just going to try and free it. So just a quick play, not too long, if it doesn't move we'll wait till haul out. But I was going to attach a lead weight and see if we can just nudge it down. Let's go. After the lead ball broke and no luck moving the keel, Dad decided he would wait until haul out to further investigate.
So thanks for watching. Join us next week for more fun in Mexico. Thank you, thank you. We love you and we'll see you next time. Uh, Bye. Bye, guys. Bees are all over me. I'm going to have a swim. A swim. What a <sighs> Shake it off. I'm going to press start again. <laughs> Kill the flies for me. How much do you love me? Do you when there's flies and you're trying to video? Cut. <laughs> take, take 500. <laughs> Don't freak him out. <laughs> Hold on. Well, Sarah had a bee on the leg. Could be allergic to him. I haven't been stung yet, so I don't know. Ever in your life? No. What? You know the spiel, babe. Go. Righto.